Or let's look at the store. We got the calendar release from GIICC. Looks like we're having a couple things happen this week. Black Bolt is going to be legendary this week. We're going to have double drops for Asgard. And then also for Wakanda, the Flash event will be Chaos Theory. So we can get the, the promo credits, uh, Greek Raid. And then we're going to have a couple events start. We're also expecting a patch. Uh, my best guess, the patch will be on Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, looks like Nico will be going into the raid store. Uh, one of the things that people ask me all the time is what should I be hoarding? And um, the, the easy answer to that quest is uh, Marvel Strike Force always be hoarding, hoard everything. But more specifically, uh, we're anticipating uh, some, diff uh, some changes to the Cosmic Crucible store that are going to use this gold currency right here. Uh, the gold currency is the Cosmic Crucible updates. It's going to be the Elite Crucible credits. Some excellent characters in here. Gambit, Hulkbuster, Abomination. So my suggestion would be to save those if you're looking for those characters. Also, we've got some events starting. Cold Hearted Web Milestone. Uh, in this event, you will be spending campaign energy. So maybe you want to save that. And then Ghastly Experiments Milestone. Spend Power Cores. And I just wanted to say... In my video on Friday, I sarcastically said, everybody loves these spend power core events. No, everybody hates these spend power core events. Well, not everybody, but most players do not like these events at all. That's what I was trying to say, although it came across as sarcastically. So uh, yeah, that's not really great uh, because especially for free to play. So again, always be hoarding them. I gotta talk about this. Uh, and I just, I've been, I've been thinking about this. This is really horrible. Uh, so, I, uh, as we know, uh, we're waiting for the patch and so we can get more information. I think a lot of people right now are operating on the assumption that there is not going to be any minion reworks at all. And uh, so this is putting people in a, lot, in, in, a, in a terrible situation where they have to upgrade minions. Now, the reason why I feel like this is super sketchy and truly player unfriendly from Marvel, uh, from Marvel Strike Force point of view, from the developer's point of view, is that they're requiring it on the low difficulties. Like literally you don't have to have Bionic Avengers and Wakandans to do node five. You can use just regular mutants on node six and seven and, and no restrictions on eight and nine, but they have put everybody at a hard stop from getting through any of the milestones on minions on nodes one and two. Now this could be a non-event and I'm being maybe a little bit optimistic here. And, and the problem is, is we won't really know until uh, the event starts, but what, you know, we could, the, you know, the, the nodes could be super easy and the really hard nodes could be the non-legendary mutant. I mean, we don't know what nodes going to be the hardest. Um, and, and I'm being optimistic that, uh, that the nodes are going to be easy, but uh, I'm not really sure I want a minion rework. Uh, if they say, XYZ team is getting a rework. That still doesn't mean that the team is going to be useful anywhere. And instead of the minions that you currently have in your upgraded, let's say you have um, the Ravager minions upgraded and they say aim is going to be the best team and then you're compelled to be competitive and then you have to upgrade aim. I don't know if that's a good thing either, like uh, having a team rework. So uh, I know a lot of people have certain suggestions and we're going to probably... Uh, do that for me. I have Ravagers upgraded because I use them a little bit in war and I also have Merc Lieutenant and Merc Riot Guard. I know that there was stat boost to two of the hand minions uh, two patches ago. I believe that was hand Blade Master and hand Archer had minor stat boosts. So those are things to consider. Uh, hopefully this will get resolved uh, her, you know, soon, quickly in the next week on uh, Tuesday or Wednesday. Probably just me, but has anybody noticed a change to this Doom skill nodes? I've noticed it. Um, there's a certain amount of variance every day in the nodes, and just some days it's harder than others. Uh, the thing is super frustrating on that first node for me, where somebody just gets deleted before I get to take a turn. It is a thing. MSFGG site not working. Uh, I had an issue with MSFGG today, and I had to log out of my Scopely ID account and log back in, and that fixed the problem for me. In a perfect world, what would you like MSFGG to be? For me, 
I play a cell phone game. I would like to have all the information I need to play this game to be on my phone. I would like there to be no reason whatsoever to go MSFGG. I am not Chrome browser gamer. I'm mobile gamer. I thought I was signing up for a mobile game and yet I have to go to msf.gg to do a lot of important things. In a perfect world, I wouldn't need msf.gg. That's what I think. Next, how long will it take to get Mr. Negative to seven stars? Uh, I, I think it's 160 three days, which is a little more than five months, five, five and a half months. So uh, there's an offer today. I'm going to talk about that offer. I just feel like that's kind of a scam when you're basically Mr. Negative is the Wolverine of the web store. Again, you have to log on to a website to get him. Yeah, a bio raid team is cool. Can we get a proper skill team next and next patch? Yeah, I don't know if they're going to do that. It, it, it feels really off. Uh, to get a, a, a bio team when we really need a skill team. I, I, I think that they don't want to make it super easy. And there's a lot of variance on that skill nodes. I play it almost every day. And sometimes you you lose a character before you even take a turn, even with a million power team. It's it's really frustrating. So I, I, I think, I, I wonder if there was something like with a, a movie being canceled or pushed around. It just feels very out of order. Uh, and my suggestion on this... Um, by a raid team is like I wouldn't ignore the team, but maybe shelve the team. Uh, the same thing happened when symbiotes were the biggest thing, and and web warriors came out. Like I eased into the to the web warriors team, but I don't think you could ignore it. Like everybody is using web warriors today, and I feel like everybody's going to use the new bio team when they introduce a new bio raid, and you're going to have to use them. So I wouldn't ignore them, but I also wouldn't rush out and upgrade them right away unless you have like tons of extra resources, especially when uh, probably the right thing to do would be saving resources uh, for minions when we find out what is going to be the optimal strategy. And hopefully, I'm hoping that the, as far as the minion situation is that the first two nodes are going to be super easy and you're not going to have to upgrade them as much as the rest of your teams. Can we please have no coordinated assault for monthly events? And uh, I, 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 re I just want to talk to this point here a little bit. Uh, do we have to really rely on Alliance to be able to finish monthly milestones because of the, a lot of players may miss out last couple I've finished, but that's because after the first couple of monthly events, which I didn't complete, my doubt my aunts did too. I managed to complete the monthly events, but after losing a flute pyres are probably due to them losing interest and the faith in the game. I've not finished the milestones again. And I'm sure a lot of my Alliance haven't due to coordinated assault. A lot of people are missing out on the monthly events because of coordinated assault. Scopely stance is very clear. If you are a, a competitive player and you are playing with casual casual players that, and you want to stay in a casual alliance because these are your friends, you are not going to have an optimal Marvel Strike Force experience. They're doing it deliberately and, and they almost don't want any casual alliances. We all need to be playing the game 24-7. Never mind if you have a job. Or, or a family, or have other things to do. You need to be logging into Marvel Strike Force as much as possible, and every single person in your alliance needs to be playing the same way, all 24 of you, or you miss out on rewards. It feels like this has been their stance for a long time, that they want alliances to be homogenous. If you're casual, go play with casual people. If you're competitive, go play with competitive people, and do not mix. You're going to have a bad experience. So I'm just letting you know that's the way it is. And, uh, you know, if you're, if you're frustrated with your alliance, uh, it, it seems to be intentionally manufactured and they just simply do not care about people playing with their friends or playing in casual alliances anymore. Has anyone else noted the latest training match since the G14-15 debacle? I have myself. I see this on Reddit almost every single day. And the answer, absolutely yes. And then this, Mojo's Mason is getting stingy on character shards. And I just want to say last month, I did not buy the Mojo Pass for the first time. For a couple of reasons. One, I didn't feel like it was a good value. And secondly, I'm not blitzing and doing RTA and I wasn't going to max out the milestones. It's just me or Mojo Mayhem getting less and less shards for the same work. Maybe I'm off, but I'm fairly certain that the first three runs of these events, you get 40, 45 or 50 character shards of whatever character was available free to play. And then another 50 of you paid for it. The current event, you only get 30 bronze shards free to play and another 35 if you pay for the pass. That's 65 down from 100 when it first started. 
Braun is important as Apocalypse Saga, and they want to keep they keep him hard to get. But come on, these events are getting uh, to the pointless level. And not only that, uh, you only get 500 cores versus the 1,000 cores, and the other pass is not that compelling. Next, oh boy, this is one of my 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 pet peeves right now. Spider Weaver Iso Attack is not permanently killing enemies like her passive states. And I, I want to say that I brought this up to the developers. And there's a couple other things that are brought up to the developers. I noticed a few times now that if you use an ability on low health enemy, her follow-up ISO attack gets the final bow, they will still revive. And this is despite her passive stating that enemies killed by this character cannot revive. I like to know whether this is working correctly or it is a bug. I think this is a bug it, or they need to reword the kit. Uh, like I've said on kits before, there's the way that the developers wanted to work the way that the kit reads and the way that it actually works are uh, very clearly. I don't believe the developers wanted it to work this way. The kit reads a certain way and then in game it works. Uh, it does not work correctly. So uh, this is something that I think that needs to be fixed. It's been brought up and I don't know if they're going to do anything. Like something else that is super annoying to me and, and I brought up to the developers recently is specifically with the order of operations on red Hulk special uh, red Hulk special you know, there's an ordinary operations, clear barrier on primary adjacent targets that goes first. And then the problem is this, the revive happens, the, the clear revive happens after the attack. So for example, if you're playing an arena and you attack a weak spider weaver and the first attack kills her, she still revives. Why can't this clear revive once happen before the first attack? So it clears barrier, clears the revive once, then it attacks and then she dies. It's actually more of a hassle to fight a weak spider weaver at times than a strong spider weaver. And the other thing that is super annoying is why can't we get this information in game? Assist, counter info. Uh, why can't we have it in blog posts? Why can't we have it on MSFGG on the day of the patch? This is super annoying because uh, what's gonna happen is the patch is gonna go live on Tuesday or Wednesday, let's say, there's gonna be a new character for sale and this information is not going to be anywhere. It's not gonna be in game. It's not gonna be on msf.gg. And there's, why can't it be in game? Why can't you just go into a character's kit uh, and, and just click on the character, just like you can on a summon and just click right here, somewhere up here and it shows the information. If they're not gonna do that, then why can't they have the information on msf.gg be posted the day of the patch, not two days later? If they can't do that, then why can't they post this information in the blog post? It's kind of ridiculous. All right, let's keep moving on. Uh, next, we've got kind of a garbage offers right here. Astonishing X-Men. X-Men team offer five, six, or seven star, $40. Oh, get out of here for an equal chance at a five, six, or seven. And also, I've, I, the Death Seed team's around the corner, and it's going to replace this team. Uh, this team is going to be like the Symbiotes. I mean, they're still a very good team. They still have a lot of good use, but so were the Symbiotes back in the day, and they were replaced by Web Warriors, and now the Web Warriors are being replaced. So uh, I, I feel like this team is going to be replaced, so this is just astronomically expensive. On the flip side, this is very reasonable in pricing, uh, $10 for a hundred rare character size, but keep in mind, uh, I, I feel like any investment, any kind of resources that you put in this team, you know, is going to be, if you're going to get apocalypse and you're going to do nemesis and all that, it's going to, that, that team is going to be replaced. And the most optimal raid team is no longer for, uh, mutant is no longer going to be astonishing X-Men. So just keep that in mind. They're getting replaced. Then, um, I just wanted to point out that there was a $5 offer for gambit for 50 shards that there was in the store for one hour and then they pulled it. And this offer will be coming back, they said sometime in December. So that, you know, if you're looking for Gambit shards, uh, not only can you, you know, should you wait, I believe, to get him for 50 character shards for $5, but also there's gonna be that new store. And if you're really looking for Gambit shards, you're gonna, the Elite Cusable Credits, uh, which is this gold currency, is just around the corner. Uh, my understanding is next patch as well. Then lastly, this is trash. Oh my God. 50 character shards for Mr. Negative. He is the Wolverine of the web store. Uh, starting from scratch, going into the web store every day, you get five shards. You should be able to get five shards every day by going into the web store and you will get him to seven stars in a, in a point of five months or something like that. So 
uh, be sure to do that. Now, I wanted to bring something back that I used to do all the time. And, oh my God, this is extremely sarcastic. But I really hope you liked this video today. And if you did, for every single person that likes this video, we'll be getting for free in their account an eight-star Spoderman. This is not a scam. If it doesn't show up in your inbox, wait longer. Bye for now.